The following video is an interview that I did with Connor Kenny, who is another YouTuber that has made a significant amount of money in crypto. I want to get his opinions on the market. We talk about how you would invest a thousand dollars. We cover a lot more. Now, I want to get his opinion because he started a business in crypto, but also has been investing in crypto from the last bear market. He's made over a million dollars in crypto and at one point had over a million dollar crypto portfolio. This is a great interview. How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. Today, we're talking with Connor Kenny. We have links to his channel underneath the video, but Connor, thanks for coming on. No worries, bro. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Can you tell me kind of your thoughts on the market right now? Uh, it's been kind of a crazy couple months, I know. Just the overall thoughts? Yeah. The whole market, the crypto market? What do you want from me? Since we talked last was probably like a month ago, right when FTX was collapsing. So I'd yeah. love to kind of get your take on uh, the market. And we have more in-depth questions, but just overall. Well... As a whole, I think the market's done very well considering what happened with FTX. Like, I'm surprised. Like, if you had gone back, let's say, let's say a week before we were hanging out, right? And I said to you, next month, FTX, the second largest, largest or third largest, whichever it was, is going to collapse. What price do you think Bitcoin's going to be after that collapse happens, right? And it turns out that like Alameda Research and FTX and all of this nonsense was happening, and. Uh, I know I asked you what price you thought Bitcoin would be. What this would think? Yeah, I mean, I would have assumed they'd fall a lot more than ten percent or so, and we're sitting just below the previous low okay. now. So it's been kind of crazy that's held up this well, honestly. Yeah, yeah. So I'm surprised at how well Bitcoin's held out. Um, overall, the amount, the Fed pivot, and even when the Fed pivots, we nearly always get a crash just after that with. Uh, the stocks and shares market and things like that so things aren't going to look good for a while but we are holding up very nicely i made a video yesterday i think it was yesterday or the day before basically outlining exactly what i thought was going to happen basically i go through both the bear case and bullish case and essentially i think around 2025 is when we'll go into another uh bull market and we'll probably have a uh mm, a dead cat bounce a relief rally Maybe you can call it that. I don't know what people want to call the 2019 little rally that we had, but something similar to that. Bitcoin actually moved 300% in that time. It gave back all of those uh, gains, pretty much everything just before when uh, the Rona Ronison happened, but we had that opportunity in the market. So the way I see it is we're most likely going to stay down. If, if we do the same thing as we did the last bear market, probably 15,000 could be a region that we just continually revisit. You know, we just go up, we go down, we revisit this 15. If we do what we've done in basically every other bear market, including the last one, which is go down 85%, most likely what's on the cards is a $10,000 Bitcoin. But again, I don't think that's going to last very long, just like the $3,000, $3,500 didn't last very long each time it hit it, but it hit it multiple times. So, you know, we've got a long time ahead of us, a long road ahead of us, but I think there's there's a lot of opportunity if you believe that Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market is going to come back. If not, then I don't know why you're watching this video. But <laughs> if you do, I think there's a lot of opportunity that we have ahead of us. Yeah. What What do you think brings us down there, right? Is it DCG? Is it more uh, liquidations from FTX? And I kind of want to get your thoughts specifically on DCG too, even if that's not one of the things that brings it down. Well, I think that it's going to be some sort of contagion from it, it we were looking for another black swan event you know if ftx was a black swan event event we're probably looking for another one of those maybe it's a contagion from ftx as a company you know that hasn't disclosed the fact that they actually have been you know royally effed by the whole situation and then they go down or something happened you know the biggest exchanges all of that sort of stuff usdt has some sort of issue one event like that can bring us down and you know I do think it's possible for us to go down, but I also don't think we're going to stay down in the regions if it does happen for that long. So uh, I'll be buying that dip if it happens. Sure. Uh, do you do you think there's any problem with GBTC? I don't know if you've kept up with that, but it's selling at like a 47% discount. It's owned, kind of operated by uh, the parent company of uh, Grayscale, which is Genesis, which, uh, or D DCG, which also owns Genesis, which is in trouble. Do you think there's going to be yeah. some kind of unwinding with GBTC or uh, with Bitcoin in that? 
Well, that's the thing. That could be the event. You know, there's a there's 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 a lot of events I think that are on the horizon. The discount is an amazing discount if they manage to pull through, right? But mm -hmm. we'll see if that happens. And yeah, that's the kind of huge company collapsing that has the contagion that we might need for us to drop, you know, a lot lower. But you know, with all of that aside, the bullish the bullish bull in me, I don't really care if Bitcoin goes from fifteen k to ten k. It's really not that big of a deal if you have a long term horizon. Of course, if we're trying to do what we were doing in you know twenty twenty one, where we were making insane gains in a short period of time, just not the case, right? Maybe we'll have some pump. You know, Dogecoin has done well over the last uh, few weeks, things like that. But uh, yeah, I really don't care if it goes down. I'll just buy more, and uh, that way, a dollar cost averages me lower, and that's what I want. I want a Bitcoin for a, a, a lower price. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like too with GBTC, I wouldn't be surprised if some other company tried to come in and buy it. If if they were really having that big an issue and they had to liquidate it, I'm, I mean, it's kind of a cash cow right now because even with the discount, right, they get 2% management fees on $6 billion. Uh, yeah. That's $100 million or $120 million a year just for holding the Bitcoin. So it seems like someone would jump in and try to buy that. But uh, I could always be wrong, you know. Who, the the gray or the black swans are black swans for a reason because no one expects them to happen. Exactly. Um, so you said that you'd exactly. be. Sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's if if it's an event, it's most likely an event that no one expects. Mm -hmm. Like you know, these events that people are expecting. You know, yeah, it will probably drop a bit if that happened, but. It's more it's more the panic than it is anything else really you know these ones that that destroy the markets the panic of it being you know this is it that's the end so that's the kind of thing that we need and yeah. uh yeah so something that we're not expecting yeah you said you would be buying if we did have something unexpected come up and we fell down to ten thousand dollars are you buying now too or are you kind of waiting around i know last time we talked you wait so, for specific levels yeah, so uh, we do it a little bit differently, although I do buy Bitcoin. So right now I'm really only buying Bitcoin and a little bit of Ethereum and every now and then a little bit of the smaller coins. You know, that's every now and then something pops up where I'm like, oh, that's a good thing or something DeFi or some these DGEN things. But it's a very small amount of the portfolio and then some altcoins. But mainly when I say I'm dollar cost averaging, I'm dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin and a little bit into Ethereum. So the thing is, is if we do drop down, I'll buy it at 10 because I started buying heavily. I think it was, I think it was 20,000, the mid 20,000 ranges, but, but heavily, you know, we, ever since we dropped, I think when we were talking about it, when we met in America, it was around what, 40,000, 39,000, I think I was mm -hmm. buying, but not, not extremely heavily, uh, depending on how you, how you would consider extremely heavily. But I started buying the most heaviest I've been doing since about 20K. And uh, I bought again at 15, six, I think it was. It may have been, you know, give or take a couple of hundred dollars. But so the way I, so if it drops down to 10K, I'll be buying because it will be an extreme fear event. So the way I do it is I don't so much just buy every week or every month, even though I do that when there's more funds that become available, but I don't, I'm not so strict of it. What I am quite strict with is fighting my emotion and doing the exact opposite of what my emotion says when it comes to Bitcoin. So when we have an event like FTX that pushes the price from 21,000 to 15,000, everything in my being is telling me that that's it. It's over. We're going to zero, <laughs> all of that. And that's the point where I'm buying. So yeah, sure. I bought at 15.6 and if we get the same thing again, I'll be buying again. I'm if so once we, I'll probably be buying. You know, if we stay in the levels of uh, what are we on seventeen or sixteen and eight or whatever we're on right now, but uh, if we stay in those levels between that and say twenty one, I'll be cautious, very slowly, dollar cost averaging, not so much, just here and there. And then it's when I do the big buys is when we have these big events that go downwards. Sure. So I guess that. Uh gives me my other question which is when are you going to dollar cost average out or take profits i mean let's say we're a year from now you said you think the bull run would be 2025 but let's say we're at end of 2023 and the market's starting to return maybe we're at thirty thousand dollar bitcoin are you going to start taking profits then or are you going to wait and say hey we're not even half the all-time high if we go to another bull market we'll be at a hundred thousand one hundred fifty thousand maybe two hundred thousand dollar bitcoin why would I sell at 30 when I could sell at 5 excess in another six months or a year? Or are you saying, hey, I'm up almost yeah. 100% from the bottom. 
and I put more money in at the bottom specifically so that I could just double it. Kind of what are your thoughts on that? When are you going to start taking profits so that way you can set that plan aside now so that way you are level headed when it happens? Yeah, so it's a hard one, especially with Bitcoin, because I did sell some Bitcoin in the last bull market, but the main gains don't come from Bitcoin. Like if if, if I put in a significant amount of money and we do, you know, like a three, four, five X from here, sure, that's an opportunity to take some profits. I will take profits from Bitcoin if I it's 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 less about the price exactly and more about the emotion that happens in the market. So if we get to 30k but it's a slow gradual movement we have uh you know a nice macro environment things are moving slowly it's not crazy mm-hmm. then i'll most likely not shave too much i probably would take a little bit off at 30k depending on how much i get if i get a ton at let's say 10k i'll most likely be taking a little bit of profits at 30k but it's more about the environment so the choices that i made when i was selling in the last bull market all came down to the environment that we are in, where basically it was an up only environment. So that was, it, it's always been less about the exact prices because I just don't know. You know, like people say Bitcoin's going to a million dollars or a quarter of a million dollars or the market cap of gold or whatever it is, right? I don't know. I got no idea. So I think that Bitcoin will get to 100K at some point. That's what I would say as a conservative guess, right? Yeah. And it all depends on 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 how the environment is at the time. If everyone goes crazy with leverage again and we get up to 30K very fast, I'll be taking profits. And that will mean that Bitcoin's at 30K, but most of these altcoins, if I'm buying small amounts that are very, very uh, uh, risky, they're going to have mad runs as well. Very short, brief runs, and I'll definitely be taking profits from there, seeing if the market gets into that euphoric stage, which I'm sure it will. You know, if we start to get up to that 30K region. Yeah, that makes sense. I think you said that you're buying mostly Bitcoin now. But uh, what altcoins are you looking at for the next bull market? Are there anyone specifically? And I'm guessing it's probably changed since our last video together as well when we were talking about exchange tokens, I assume. But let me know. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Yes. So the exchange tokens, I think, was uh, it's a hard one because if the exchange is isn't doing shady stuff you know it's still and it's still been proven to outperform right Mm -hmm. it just depends it's just we now have the lesson that we learned from the ftx thing that uh maybe we shouldn't be trusting them so much right so it's an added level of risk so uh i think there's definitely still profit to be made there i would be staying away from exchange tokens in this moment in time right i actually sold uh uh most of my exchange tokens uh, I think it was around when it was happening and it was just a case of, I just don't need this level of risk when it comes to the contagion, right? We might yeah. hit one random and then that's it, right? So it's a, uh, it's not worth the level of risk. And, uh, uh, with, 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 uh, altcoins, it's a hard one because what we saw in the last bear market or the last bull to bear was you know, not a lot of the coins are the same ones that are going to make it again, right? We saw a lot of, there were a lot and there were a lot that were new. So it's very hard where we are right now because I don't think that we're in, uh, there's a period in the bear market where it's done, right? Most like, not done, but like, you know what I mean? The overall thought process is, you know, it's very much shifted now from people being impressed with crypto to people being like, oh, you make videos about crypto. Ugh. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we're yeah. there now, but we haven't been here long enough, you know? So I think this for me is the period for research and the period for finding these coins and these things. I still have a lot of the coins because I sold probably, I don't know exactly the percentages, but I sold a decent chunk in the bull market and I still hold the majority of those coins, smaller positions in those coins, which if they get lower, uh, I'll start as dollar cost average into. But what I'm looking for now is building in this environment and uh, uh, just, yeah, mainly mainly the, the building aspect of things and just making sure that it's not just gone silent. You know, there's a lot of projects that will just go silent in this time. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for huge partnerships. One of the best examples is Polygon Matic um, with their with all of the partnerships they're doing. And that's exactly the poster child of what we're looking for in this environment. Mm-hmm. No, I think that makes sense. 
you don't want to be part of the projects that just go dark uh, when there aren't people yeah, watching yeah. as much. Now, there are timestamps underneath the video, but I do want to thank today's show sponsor. B Crypto VIP is the first crypto club where you can pay for all products and services in crypto. 5% of each minted membership automatically goes to staking rewards on Kangit Exchange, and 95% will be burned forever. As a member of the club, you can get up to 60% on crypto fiat exchange transactions in all Airdance dot exchange physical offices in UAE, Thailand, UK, Poland, and Ukraine. They're also fully doxed. Now, BE is the native token of B Crypto VIP, and to join the club, you need to purchase one of the six types of B NFTs. Every NFT membership includes allocation slot in an operating liquidity pool with passive income of between 30 to 85% APY. The top three packages, whales, sharks, and dolphins of membership get access to personal concierge services and dedicated mobile application. Membership can be minted on bcryptovip.io, link underneath the video, only with the BE token. The BE token is having their IEO on kanga.exchange on the 13th of December. Now, of course, always do your own research. I'm not telling you to buy or sell, but I want to bring this to your attention. Two final questions. Uh, any suggestions for newer crypto investors? I'm assuming almost everyone here is probably uh, a veteran. At least uh, they've been in for maybe a year. But I'm sure if we get low enough, some new people will probably come in. Kind of like when COVID happened, everything crashed so quickly that people got into the market or people will be watching this like in a couple months maybe and maybe mark the market's going back up and they want to know some advice from you know a veteran. Any suggestions for new investors? Well, it's definitely not financial advice. Yeah. <laughs> Far from it. Far See, from it. You know, they were just two random guys sitting in their room. Yeah. So don't listen to anything <laughs> we're saying. I would say right now, it's just all about, I for me, it's all about Bitcoin and a little, little bit of Ethereum and use this time to, uh, you don't have to chase it. There's no pumps to chase. We don't have to chase pumps, right? So mm -hmm. dollar cost average into projects that you genuinely believe in. And for me, that is Bitcoin wholeheartedly. I believe that Bitcoin isn't going anywhere. So I'm okay with dollar cost averaging into that. And you can feel that way about a number of different coins, but there's no reason to be super risky. There's no reason to be dumping loads of money into the market all at once. If you have, let's say it's $1,000, you can break that up into $100 chunks and you can just chuck that in once a month uh, into, let's say, four different coins that you like or something like that. And you can stay uh, relatively safe, right? As long as $1,000 is not a lot of money to you, that's money that you can afford to lose. There's no reason to uh, uh, be too risky right now. Like I didn't put a lot of money into Cardano, but I bought a significant amount of Cardano tokens in the bear market with a small amount of money and that returned insane gains in the bull market and this will happen again uh so there's just no reason to be uh overtly risky you can trade short term uh if you have learned how to do it or you can use the time now to learn how to trade so you can make the best of the bull market when it comes because uh in that environment it's much more likely that the price is going to go up right you can also short the market that sort of stuff but these are all the kind of things that you need to do only once you've learned how to do it you can use small amounts of leverage to help you small amounts being way lower than what anyone thinks you know 3x is is something that you could do but not these don't use 100x leverage because that's like you, you, you're asking to be liquidated yeah but using this time to learn using this time to make the best using this time to not get emotional about the market except that uh the price has gone down and this is just a normal cycle that we're going through and uh I guess you got to have faith that it's going back up. And if you don't have faith that it's going back up, then maybe there's something else to be focusing on. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't think there are probably too many people here, except for maybe people without a life that are watching just because they uh, hate cryptocurrency. But um, so you, yeah, yeah. you kind of hit on my last question, which would be, let's say you are someone that makes $50,000 a year. You get a Christmas bonus for $1,000, right? You're usually able to save $500 a month or something. So you still have uh, savings and investments and stuff like that. But you want to set that Christmas bonus aside, $1,000, and put it into crypto. Um, and let's say you have a long-term outlook, not 10 years, but you're fine holding till the next bull run, whether it's two years or three or four. What would you buy knowing that, um, of course, they can save more, but that's a significant amount of money. 
It's a hard one to answer because uh, I don't know the position of that person. Uh, I would buy Bitcoin. Like if, if I was in that position, I would just buy mostly Bitcoin and then a little bit, you know, something like Polygon Matic, like for the reasons why we laid out something like that. I'm not saying that, but something like that. It could be that. But in and around projects that are building, right? But mainly I would be focusing on Bitcoin just like I did, just like I did in the last bear market. Um, and then focusing on the events and investing when the market is is low and people are scared. Doing the exact, try and do the exact opposite of what the overall market is doing. And do that with that small amount of money, right? You don't need to be doing it with way more than you can afford. But uh, yeah. yeah, I'd be focusing on Bitcoin personally. I'd be focusing on a little bit of Ethereum. And then I'd be putting a little bit aside for uh, these good altcoins, for example, Polygon, and then a small, even smaller amount for something wild like Dogecoin, because that can either go to zero or back to where it was before and back to where it was before, I think right now is maybe a seven or eight X. So that's the kind of thing that I would be doing. Okay. So are, are you thinking invest mostly in Bitcoin because there's more of a chance that it will be around in the other altcoins, like you said earlier, could be uh, not very prevalent the next bull run or is it more likely that you think that bitcoin dominance is going to go up so it just makes sense to buy bitcoin because everything else will bleed against it or some other reason i just don't i just don't i don't think that bitcoin's going to zero whereas mm. anything else in my eyes can go to zero so okay. that's the reason why it's really hard for me to answer right because uh i in that position I would just feel more comfortable buying Bitcoin. And even in the position I'm in right now, 95% of everything I'm buying is Bitcoin because I believe that Bitcoin is not going to zero. So what do I want to do? I want to preserve my wealth in a bear market. I want to be exposed to these crazy things that might pump. That's why I buy some Dogecoin here and there. That's why I buy some of these other small coins here and there. But in my head, I know that uh, uh, Bitcoin is not going to zero in the same way I believe that the S&P 500 isn't going to zero, right? So hmm. I feel much more comfortable doing that. So if I was someone who was making 50 grand a year and I wanted a potential upside of, you know, even our last all-time high is, is what, 5x away or something like that, right? Yeah. It's like whatever it is, right? Yeah, That's still a significant upside. And it's like, okay, cool. So the likelihood of it going down to zero is is negligible in my mind the likelihood of it going from 15 to 10 is pretty high in my mind so that's why we do the dollar cost averaging but if you can get bitcoin for an average of between let's say 15k and down to 5k at that you know in the extreme event that it could go that low i don't believe it's gonna but it may if you can get it in and between there you're most likely going to be making money so that's why that's what i would be doing you know, okay because i want to make money yeah. i want to make money with with Good upside, but not so much risk. Yeah, no, I get you. Well, I also, yeah. also let me let me just add to that. Sorry, uh, will, there'll be opportunities to get crazy gains once the market comes back. Like we can put small amounts of things in in and around these crazy coins, but the most amounts of gains will be happening while the bull market's happening. So it's like you know you'll be able to find those things when it happens. You don't really need to be finding them so much right now. That's what I think anyway. Yeah, it seems like we have lots of time right now. I mean, we can get freaked out over a 10% move in Bitcoin or, or some altcoin, but it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things if you're buying Bitcoin at 17 or 18, you know, in the long term, it's just going to be whether it goes up in the future or goes down to zero, which I don't think there's much of a chance of that happening. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, appreciate you coming on. Any final thoughts before we go? Uh, stay patient. Yeah. Just be patient. I don't think, like I said at the start, I don't think this is going to end very soon. I do think we're going to have some fun mo moments, just like we had a DeFi summer uh, in the last bear market or just before the bull market. But then we did have, we things will be happening, right? There's a lot of eyeballs on crypto. And uh, I think people just need to be patient and yeah, wait it out. Perfect. Appreciate you coming on. Links underneath the video to Connor's channel. And we'll see you in the next one.